Any of you who have followed me for any amount of time know that this is not the usual setup for my monthly compilations. Usually I do two videos, one for my skits and one for my discussions. Uh, the problem is that this month I had a bit of a hectic schedule. I actually ended up graduating from college and because of that, I didn't have enough time to dedicate to really making skits as much. Um, so what we're going to do for this month's compilation is that we are just going to put them all in one video. There's only two skits and I'm going to put them out front uh, so you guys can enjoy those. They're both Moon Knight related videos. And then we're just going to get into the discussions after that. Uh, I hope you guys understand. I promise to have a little bit more skit content in the coming month. So thank you guys for sticking around. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoy. Steven? No. Steven, I need the body. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I'm gonna let you have my body. All right, Steven, we really don't have time for the conversation of whose body it is, but I, I really need the body to help us survive. Oh, oh, you need the body to survive, do you? I don't know if you realize, but I'm getting chased by men with guns out here and, and a jackal werewolf, so I, I don't think I'm going to let you have my body because every time you get control of it, I end up getting shot at! Yeah, sorry, but, but that boat's kind of already sailed. You're, get, you're gonna get shot at. So you're just gonna leave the fucking werewolf that I talked about? That That's not even the point, huh? Okay, first of all, it's not a werewolf, it's a jackal. And second of all, I fucking handled it. And third of all, if you are getting stressed out about the werewolf, I'm never gonna tell you about Dracula. I'm sorry, about who? God fucking damn it. Did you just say fucking Dracula? It's not really important right now, man. Like the fucking Dracula. Like, like the, 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 the book Dracula. That Dracula. Yes, man. Count Dracula. He fucking owes us money for something. Is that really what you want to focus on right now? Yeah, a little bit. How the fuck does Count Dracula owe you money? I don't remember. What the fuck do you mean you don't remember? I mean, I don't fucking remember. Okay, we got other shit going on right now. What other shit do you have going on that is more important than Count fucking Dracula owing you money? I don't fucking know, man. Okay, that's the line of work we're in. Sometimes Dracula owes you money. Sometimes you cut a motherfucker's face off. That's the game. I'm sorry. Did you just say that you cut somebody's face off? <sighs> Fuck. Like, 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 like the whole thing. I think that you just fucking did, did snatch it. Like, like, like the movie. Like Nicholas Cat. It was a little. It was a little less precise than that. Yeah, basically. Oh my god, I'm gonna be sick. Oh my god, god, she's gonna kill me. Steven, I really need the body, man. Hmm. Okay, I just... I just wanna make sure I'm getting this correct now. You just told me you cut somebody's fucking face off, and you want me to give you the body now? Uh, seeing as we're currently hiding in a bathroom so we don't get shot, yeah, yeah, that would be beneficial. No, you're absolutely not. I'm never giving you the body again. You're fucking crazy. First of all, that's insensitive. We have a mental condition. And second of all, the proper term is we. We are crazy. Is there anything else that you just want to fucking mention out of fucking nowhere? I mean, uh, is now a bad time to mention Jake? Fucking who? Hey, Steven, I drive a cab. What the fuck? We're never gonna leave this fucking bathroom. Elsewhere. Hey, Eddie. Yeah, buddy? Do you ever get the feeling that our gimmick is being stolen? Getting real sick and tired of you bringing up your ex, dude. It, that is not no, what I am doing exactly right now. What you you are doing? Fucking doing it. Right. Uh. Mark? You are aware that we're supposed to be scary, right? Yeah, I have seen the scene. Okay, good. You're, you're aware that people are supposed to be fucking terrified when they see us, correct? I mean, aside from the fact that we're wearing an entirely white costume with a hood, I'm not particularly sure why people need to be scared of us. I, I, I think that we can do some good if people aren't scared of us. I have literal fucking knives embedded in my chest plate. And you said what to the werewolf? Oh my god, are you still on that? Yes, I am still on that! It was a Muhammad Ali reference, man! I thought you would be proud of me! Proud of you? You fucked up my costume, for one! I personally think that mine is much more dapper. I'm very sure it is, but the fact remains that we are not supposed to be dapper, we are supposed to be scary! I still don't see what that has to be a thing. Did you- did you fucking forget the fact that you had a scrimmage sticks tucked in- into the back of your fucking vest, man? I'm sorry, I had fucking what? Scr- a scrimmage- the, 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 the poles! The poles! You had two little poles in the fucking back of your vest! What the hell was I supposed to do with those? Fucking tap them with it! No, what you were supposed to do was give me the body so I could fucking handle it, but what you decided to do was dance around like a fucking moron in the middle of the street and tell everybody our fucking identity! Okay, for one, the proper term is alter. It's really not. In this context, it, it's really not. And for two, I still don't see what the fucking problem is because we got three of them bitches and we could just switch to another one! I mean, I think we should've used a cab. We know, Jake. We do a lot of shit with a cab. We know, Jake. And hell, I mean, besides, you take your mask off every five fucking seconds, it's not exactly if we were hiding very fucking well. 
It is a miracle that Gonchu has not killed us yet. I mean, besides, even if we did get found out, you could probably just pull some more random bullshit out of your cape and fucking huck it at. Uh, you, is that how you think that my suit works? Is that I can just pull random bullshit out of my cape and I fucking huck it at people? I mean, that's how mine worked. I pulled out two random poles. I don't know what the fuck to do with those. There's sticks. There's grimace sticks. There's, they're, they're a weapon. We, we get weapons, dude. No, no, you get weapons. I get poles. Next time I tell you to give me the fucking body so that I can handle something, just GIVE ME THE BODY! I would be much more willing to do that if you stopped killing people. I'm expressly trying to kill as minimal people as possible. I mean, I'm not. We know, Jake! I stabbed two dudes. WE KNOW, JAKE! Oh, yeah, cheers. It, it really looks like you got shit under control. Okay. Stop using British slang, man. It is a learned accent, and we are fucking terrible at it. And second of all, you listen here, you little motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> Hey, where the fuck are we? Hey, I'm sorry, don't get me wrong, but it didn't seem like you two were gonna finish anytime soon and one of us still has a fucking job, okay? Oh, wait, is this a cab? Hey, dude, someone's gotta pay for all those fucking jackets you end up getting stabbed in, okay? Are we at least still in Egypt? So do you want the good news or the bad news first? Oh my god! So... This video is going to be me getting into my uh, emotions a little bit, so I, I apologize for that if that's not what you uh, you followed me for. And I'm sure you're wondering what the fuck uh, is is going on, so uh, let me explain. I am going to be graduating in less than a month from college. I'm going to be getting my bachelor's in 3D art and animation, and this was my dorm room that uh, that I filmed filmed in, which is absolutely great. Don't I know I seem really sullen right now, but that, it's absolutely amazing. Super excited. The gaming studios, they need a lighting artist. I'm your guy. The reason all of my shit is gone is not for anything bad or anything. I'm just helping my family out a little bit, and the timing lined up almost exactly with the end of my school year. So just to save myself some time from, you know, moving all the way there so I don't have to move all the way back only to be here for like a week and then graduate, I'm just going to be uh, moving back, moving back home right now. However, the reason that I seem all up in, uh, all up in my emotions and everything is because like, it, it, it wasn't real until there was nothing around. I know this is a thing that every every adult goes through where they, they, they move on to the rest of their lives, but like, this has been the last four years of my life, and not only that, I wasn't Panda Red before before college. I started all of this from, from a dorm room not too dissimilar to this one, and not now I'm moving home for, for, for the foreseeable future. And that's not a bad thing by, by any stretch of the imagination, it's just, holy shit. I, I am super excited for the next stage of my life, and this this is where this last stage started, and it is it's almost over, which is amazing and great, but also it's, it's fucking terrifying. I know a lot of people, not only in my graduating class, but also a lot of people on TikTok, a lot of other creators that I that I know and that I'm close with are all graduating around a similar time to me, and I just want to say like. <laughs> We fucking did it, guys. This might seem like I'm being melodramatic. This might seem like I'm being over the top. But this, this is this is where I'm at right now, and I just I want to cue you guys into that. I also want to thank all of you. We're at over 900,000 followers. We're we're so so close to a million, which is just so fucking baffling to me. I filmed my first skit almost a year and a half ago on a bed almost exactly like this one, and it's just fucking weird that there are so many of you, and I cannot state how fucking thankful I am. Thank you all for being with me on this journey. Thank you all for watching and listening to me and letting me nerd the fuck out as I have. I can't wait to see what this next step holds, and I can't wait to share it all with you guys still. And to all of my fans and fellow creators and just people who stroll across this video that are also going to be graduating around the same time as me. It's okay to be scared about the future. It is okay to, to, to feel what you're feeling right now, because I'm feeling it with you. But hold yourself up high and be proud of yourself, because God damn it, we fucking did it, didn't we? And no matter what that's in, that is an achievement, and you should hold yourself to it. Thank you all. I love you all. I'll see you tomorrow. So for those of you who haven't seen my last video, I am moving back home for the last month of my semester. And one of the problems that I had last year when I was working at the house was my motivation. Because when you can constantly see your bed and all the better shit that you could be doing, you don't really want to work all that much, do you? However, my parents are geniuses, and they came up with this awesome idea. Here is the rest of my room. And here is my office. I legit have like a tiny cubicle back here that I can just sit and work in. I mean this wholeheartedly, and this is not a joke, 
This is fucking awesome. Because now I have an actual work setup, so I don't have to see all of my distractions in front of me. Please excuse the mess. I am simultaneously going to school and moving houses, so... Yeah. Anyway, welcome back to Regrettable Superhero of the Week, the weekly, not weekly show where I take one character at random out of the League of Regrettable Superheroes and then I run them the fuck down. Who are we getting today? You, 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 you. Fuck, damn it. The mod, damn it. I think, I think we might have already did this, but... Yeah, we already did that. So just one more, and there we go. AAU Shoes. Did, is that... Is that his name? Sweet Merciful Fuck, his name is the Superstar. Have I ever told y'all how much I hate puns? Is this man just an ad? His profile photo is a rip-off Adidas shoe. I have enough ptomaine poison in my missiles to destroy the world, and I'll get a real boot out of defeating the AAU Superstar. I wish I was dead. This bad guy shoots poison out of his fucking toes. 18. There are 18 foot, toe, and shoe related puns on this single page. Now, I might be mistaken, but that looks like a zipper on the hem of the sweatpants that this man is wearing for his super suit. Why did you waste a half decent character design on a bad guy whose entire motivation is shooting poison out of his shoes? Yep. This dude's just an ad. The AAU superstar appeared in three, count them, three whole pages of comic book in 1977 and was created by nobody fucking knows. So ads are usually placed on the back cover of comic books, right? Actually, wait, hold on a second. Nowadays, the ads on the back are usually brands related to the parent company of the comic book company. So like, here's a modern issue of Nightwing and on the back, there's an ad for the Black Lightning show on the CW. Both are owned by Warner Brothers, so it works out. But sometimes those ads are for different companies. And in the 70s, in three whole comic books AAU Shoes, which is a company that is so obscure that it doesn't even have a Wikipedia page for me to tell you when it went out of business, created a superhero so that they could mimic comic book pages on the back of comic books. Which was this dude. I don't know his secret identity, I don't know his superpower, all I know is that he makes a lot of foot puns and that he markets the fuck out of these shoes. He's gotta at least have super strength because apparently he kicked one of his supervillains into fucking orbit in one of his pages. Or at least I quote, out of the atmosphere. He kills this villain at the end of this page. Bro just vanishes in the midair. Yeah, and that's uh, that's about all I gotta say about this guy. Not, not really a lot here. Regrettable. The jig is up, mistletoe, and also the job. In my AAU shoes, I can run all the heels out of this world. That hurt. That actually hurt. Do you have any headcanons that you wish were actually canon? Or you could probably argue that they are canon? I have so many. All right, we're just gonna go stream of consciousness with this shit because I have so many that I need to fucking sort them. And I am bad at organization, so let's fucking go. Number one, while Jason Todd might be the biggest and bulkiest Robin, even being bigger than Batman, he is definitely not cut. And no, I am not talking about the autopsy scars. I'm not even talking about this cut, which is like a soft cut. I think Jason Todd is most likely just pure mass. I don't think he does cardio outside of running for his fucking job. Because I'll tell you, I did Batman's workout. I know I didn't make the video for it, but I did that 300k special. I did Batman's workout for a week, and I did his diet. You are not going to willingly maintain that shit unless you have a 6 foot 2 fucking night demon and a butler with a shotgun telling you to. Homeboy fucking died. He's got the best out of all time. If I was him, I would have woken up and immediately gone, fuck it, it's normal workouts for me from now on. That's assumptions. Let's think about this, actually. What are the meals you've ever seen Jason Todd eat? There's only three times come to my recent memory, and two of those are him inhaling fucking fast food. And the other one is having waffles with Tim. Homeboy is not watching what he's fucking eating. Uh, no, wait, hold up, scratch that, there's four. There was that time in one of his more recent ones where he broke into a federal agent's house, ate all of her cereal, and then made them meet in a public place, which was a restaurant, where he ate all of this shit. Jason Todd eats when he can, and he does not care what the fuck goes in his body. This man eats food because when he was broke, he couldn't. Then he was picked up by fucking Batman, who I can tell you from experience does not have a manageable diet. And it is not the best tasting. Then he fucking died and was picked up by Talia in the league, where he probably ate the gruel that the rest of the fucking ninjas eat. This man quests, he fucking craves for fast food because he could not have it before. Let's take it one step further. What the fuck you think Red Hood's sleep schedule looks like? Because at least Batman and the Robins, they got this shit on a cycle. It might not be a good cycle, but it's at least a little bit of a cycle. Red Hood is a fucking murder hobo like 80% of the time. If he doesn't have a schedule of when he eats, he definitely does not have a schedule of when he sleeps. So that's workouts, diet, and rest. That's all the key tenets of getting cut, and they're all out the fucking window. Jason Todd should absolutely be the biggest rock. Hell, he should be bigger than Batman. Dude is a fucking tank. 
Bro is built for strength. He might be as attractive as Dick Grayson. Watch the original video. That's a really good point. Well, you want to know the way that they're distinguishing it? This man doesn't have washboard abs like Dick does. Which is not a bad thing. Jason Todd probably has the most realistic body out of all of them. And just as a reminder, this is what the fuck he looks like with all of that shit. I'm fucking envious. Is it obvious that I've thought about this, like, a lot, a lot? Okay. Y'all have a nice day now. So I've made fun of this character a lot, alright? And and it's well warranted. The, the character's pretty fucking dumb. But as I was cleaning up my room, I uh, I looked through all of my various uh, co cosplay stuff, and I realized that I have all of the pieces to uh, just you know p piece piece together a cosplay for this character. I will say one of the elements is, is from a PO box donation that I have not called out yet. Uh, th th there will be a new PO box video soon. I waited way too long. There there's so much stuff. It's gonna be like four videos. Anyway, uh, yeah, just uh, give me a second. One sec. So, you're 100% free to tell me that I'm wrong here, except for the fact that I'm not, I know I'm not, you're wrong, because actually... I mean, like, honestly, can we just have Dakin take up the, the patch name, because, like, I, I pulled this shit the fuck off. Don't get me wrong, I'm working on a proper Dakin cosplay, but, like, come on. This is fucking awesome, right? Alright, I'm done dressing up like James Bond with an eye patch on. You, you can go about your day. So, like I said yesterday, I'm planning on doing a P.O. Box video this weekend, but in preparation for that, there was one thing that we had been waiting on for a while since it was announced on a Twitch stream that a fan was going to be doing it. And that thing was an entire box of Mexican candies and treats, which... That came! And, uh, I just gotta say, there was a lot of stuff in there. This is, a uh, Panda from the Past right now. I just wanted to show you guys how all of these things were actually packaged. Each one of the little bunches of, of these treats were in their own little tissue wrapping paper inside of the box. Th this took time. This is awesome. Thank you very much. As I have said before, I have a tiny fat kid who lives in my soul, so this is just... <sighs> and while most of this is not spicy, there is one specific thing that is labeled as extremely spicy. A little bit of a behind the scenes thing with me, uh, I can't handle spice at all. You put too much pepper on my eggs and I, and I am down for the fucking count. So I have a workaround right now. That workaround being the fact that my mother is home and she absolutely loves spicy stuff. Say hello, Panda Mom. Hello. So she is going to remain off camera and I am going to give her this extremely spicy thing to v vibe out how extremely spicy it is. Because the card that came with it legitimately says EXTRA SPICY in ALL CAPS So that, that, that's worrying For anybody who knows this stuff better than me, the candy is called Pulperindo And again, it even says on the package that it's extra spicy, so let, let's try this out Okay, so, here you go Okay Okay, what's the, uh, what's the smell? It smells kinda like the underneath of a dirty carpet <laughs> <coughs> Okay, we're going in That's so salty. Salty. It tastes like a gerbil cage. Uh, <laughs> salty. That very salty? Any spice at all or just salt? Oh, there's the spice. Oh. There's a there's a decent amount of squirm. There's more squirming than I'm used to. Salty. <laughs> very salty. It's very salty. <laughs> Oh. It's so salty. Oh, no. Okay, so th this this is how much she ate. That is not exactly a, uh, a, a rearing endorsement of this. Okay. <coughs> okay, pray for me. Salty, right? Oh, uh, no, this, that's salty. Good. All right. <coughs> really not that spicy. Uh, that's, that's, no, it is. <laughs> All right, I need something else from the box. I apologize for this being the first thing I tried from this box. I, I need to find something else. Thank you for enduring this with me. Say goodbye to Panda Mom. <laughs> Bye. Okay, all right, th thank you all for watching. This is much better. Y'all wanna hear some of my controversial movie costume opinions? Cool, cause that's the video anyway. I'm gonna preface all of this, but this is just my opinion, so please don't come after me for it. Depending on how atrocious it is, I, I get pretty sacrilegious here.
Starting off with one I don't see that anybody else really talk about. I far prefer Black Panther's Civil War suit to the one that they end up using in the rest of the movies. Now don't get me wrong, this is super cool. I'm not saying that this costume is bad. I'm just saying I think this costume is better. This one feels bulkier. It feels more real. It's got more texture variation in it. And look at like the designs on the chest. It really accents the costume. The costume that they end up using for all of the future movies falls into this category where it looks a lot more just like a black spandex suit, which is great for comic accuracy. Don't get me wrong. But for movies, there's a reason that characters like Moon Knight aren't just wearing like a white morph suit. Those texture variations and the differences in like size and bulkiness, that that, that changes and it makes it makes it feel more real. And that's saying something, because this suit feels really real. Like, this is from Infinity War, and I will say, I love the more panther look to the face that they get. I just, I, I just like this one a, a little bit better. I am about to commit a comic book sin. Was this costume bad? Yes. Did it have some good elements, though? I'm gonna argue yet! Okay, the, the feet, you can't see it in this picture, but th this costume has feet, and that is horrifying. I don't know who said give the Green Lantern toes. They should be, they, 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 they shouldn't have made that decision. However, the veins, the really cool, like, the, the, the striations and all of the suit and everything connecting to the center circle, that, that's pretty fucking cool! Especially the circle glowing like it has the energy stored in it, like the cost, like the ring transfers all the power into that circle in his chest, and then power is siphoned back into the ring to, to harness it, essentially. That's really cool! Throughout the movie, whenever he's using his power, that, like, siphons the energy into it. And with the costume being a construct, that makes sense and is pretty dope. Also, please, for the love of God, can we stop making fun of this costume for being CG? Humans, especially naked humans, are, like, infamously hard to actually be able to animate and make look correct. And this movie came out in 2011. For the majority of the MCU, Spider-Man is CG. For basically the entire third act of Black Panther, Black Panther CG. Was the CG janky? Fuck yeah! He's way too saturated in every single scene he's in. He, he makes him look unnatural. But, like, just complaining that the suit is CG, that, that, come on. Most superhero suits are CG now. Should they have also had a live-action variant of it very much like Spider-Man? So fucking move. But that take is so cold that I'm pretty sure touching it gives you frostbite. Besides, we all want an Alan Scott or a John Stewart movie next time anyway, right? Anyway, moving on. All right, guys, hold on for a second. Keep your pitchforking torch locked up. I just, uh, let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Hugh would have looked fucking silly. Is it super cool to see this? Absolutely. But outside of this, the most flamboyant suit that we have seen is, is first class. Ain't none of them have worn a mask yet. Especially not one with thin. This would have been a cool cameo, but he would not have worn this for a full move. Oh, these comments are gonna be fun. So you know what? Actually, yeah, let, let's talk about this. This is actually a good point. My armored Batman suit, I said that I didn't super like his armored look and I'd want more of a cloth look. However, here, here, here's my reasoning, okay? This is exactly what I mean by more of a cloth suit. Something that looks durable and armored, but underneath a layer of highly durable cloth. Looking at a lot of my comments from, from that Batman video, it seems that a lot of people thought I meant I don't want him to look armored at all. Like, of course he's gonna need armor. He's fighting people with guns. Uh. And no, you're right. I 100% agree. As much as the movie is fucking terrible, to date, my favorite Batman suit is the Batman v Superman suit. It looks durable. It looks like it can take a gunshot, but also it looks like cloth. There's only two things about that suit I don't like. Like, and it's how big the bat symbol is and the fact that the neck is is so fucking thick if they gave him a different logo and he could move his head in that suit it'd be the perfect batman suit hands down and that is how i think a lot of superhero suits should be done they look armored but they still look like superhero suits that's why the captain america suits look so good is because they all look like cloth but they all do look like they are armored under it or at the very least they look like military clothing i think the only character this doesn't apply for is superman or any characters in that sort of same vicinity where they're supposed to be super ungodly power but yeah, when I say more of a cloth suit, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, oh man, dude, my my whole family is nerds. This, this Batman behind me at my, at my computer table? Yeah, my dad made that. He also made this Deadpool that we have. This Harley Quinn on my bathroom door. Commander Cody in our gym, along with another Harley Quinn. And both he and my mom have cosplayed with me to every single Comic-Con we have ever gone to. With the exception of the last one where I just went as myself so people could find me. And the first one, because we didn't really know what we were getting into. Both of my parents are the ones that got me into all of the 80s media I'm into, so like G.I. Joe and He-Man and all that shit. My mom is a huge Harley Quinn fan on top of, I think, Lady Death as well. I don't really think I need to mention the comic shop that, that we own, the, the, this comic shop that we own together. 
My dad has both a Deadpool and a Punisher tattoo. My uncle is just as big of a comic book nerd, if not nerdier than I am. And my grandparents have also cosplayed with us to every single Comic Con that they've gone to, which is multiple. And that's just talking about comic book stuff. That's not even talking about all the other nerdy shit that they're into. A family pastime that we all picked up is that every weekend we play video games together. Actually, hold on, let me go show you my setup. This is our setup in our living room, specifically so that we can play an online multiplayer only video game in the same room as each other. And we connect with my uncle and my grandparents to play games. This is a painting we've had on display in our house forever, and then right down the hallway from there is a Joker variant of that. I might be the one with a platform, but my entire family is full of nerds. So tag your favorite con- your favorite comic content creator. Shouldn't Amazo be able to beat both Doomsday and the Hulk? Ah, oh, that's way too hot. Ah! There you are! Come on, just, 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 just the fuck out! <laughs> okay. Let's take a look. Amazo, 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 amazo. Ah, yes, right here. Um, it says that Amazo is not in this book. Well, wait, but what the, wait a minute, what the fuck is that then? There you gotcha, you fuck! I just wasted a solid minute of this video doing something I could have very easily done in the background, but now you're hooked, baby! Damn, I'm good at my job. Anyway, absorption cells throughout a mesosynthetic body permit the android to replicate the special abilities of any super beings in his immediate proximity. With every hero or heroine encountered, a meso becomes even more powerful and virtually unstoppable. So, with that in mind, could a meso beat Doomsday, and could a meso beat the Hulk? That depends on a variety of factors. First of which being, when are we fighting Doomsday? Because Doomsday's one thing is that you can't kill him the same way twice. So brute strength in it just isn't a fucking option anymore. And the Hulk, well, it's infamous how many Hulks there are. And the Hulk, well, even just within Bruce Banner's mind, it's pretty infinite how many Hulks there are. We fight in the World Breaker, we fight in Savage, we fight in the Classic Hulk, what the fuck, is Joe Fixit coming out? So, in my version, I am going to say it is post the death of Superman, Doomsday, and the average Hulk that we see fight with the Avengers. And we have a couple more facts. Has Amazo fought the Avengers on his way to Hulk, and has Amazo fought the Justice League on his way to Doomsday? Because absolutely, in theory, if Amazo has fought the Justice League beforehand, and he has the reserves of the Justice League's powers in his mind, even if it was just months before, even if Professor Ivo just like stockpiled that shit in his programming, there is a potential he could kill Doomsday. However, we gotta remember when Doomsday was introduced, his first fight, not even the fight that killed him, his first fight that made everybody realize how much of a threat he was, was taking out the whole Justice League. And they were pretty fucking spread out. Amazo was one fucking guy, and a big fucking guy at that. So there is a potential, however it is slim. But, when it comes to the Hulk, if Amazo had to fight through the Avengers to get to Hulk and he had fought Thor on his way there, God damn it, it, he maybe might have a chance, but it's very slow. But if he's coming with his Justice League store, Hulk's fucked. We never canonically seen the Hulk fight Superman, however, when he fought Hyperion, who is essentially Marvel's Superman, uh, Hyperion knocked him out, and that's just one leaguer. So if Amazo comes with the Justice League's powers, ah, uh, yeah, he's got the Hulk in the back. Still hot! Yeah, it's been a while since I announced it. Sure, why not? Let's go. So, to my knowledge, unless any Comic-Cons want to reach out to me and pay for my room and board, I am attending two Comic-Cons this year. I'm a guest at one, uh, and I'm just attending as a fan to the other. I'm going to be a guest at NocoCon in Watertown, New York on June 11th and 12th, I think, along with a bunch of other TikTokers who are also going to be there. Both days, I'm going to have a table and a panel, so it's, it's going to be a ton of fun. You should check it out. And then the other Comic-Con that I'm attending is Emerald City Comic-Con in Seattle, Washington. That one I'm going to be at Saturday, August 20th, and I'm just going there because I'm, I've gone every year. It would be awesome to, to have an event there to have like a table or something, but I did not do that uh, because I didn't plan ahead. I have no idea if I'm going to go in cosplay played either of them because it, it was a ton of fun having people come up and say hi when I went just as myself last year. So like at most I'll go as Red Hood and not be wearing the hood for most of it. But yeah, so far those are the only two that I absolutely know that I'm going to. But hey, if any Comic Cons want to pay for my plane ticket, room, and board, fuck, I'll go anywhere. It's gotta be from the Comic Con though, I'm not just gonna have a fan pay for a plane ticket in a hotel room. Hold that else. I fucking hate that I'm saying this because I hate these videos, but I have a Moon Knight theory, so spoilers for Moon Knight. 
Got a gun? Did did the did the people who haven't seen it left? If if you haven't seen it, fuck off! Specifically, uh, I'm talking about episode three. If you have yet to, to fuck off. Got a gun? Good! Awesome, let's do this! So we all caught the fact that that there's a third altar, right? Like up in the desert with the fucking bloodbath, and, and Mark asked Steven, what the hell did you do? And Steven said that wasn't me. I think that they might be introducing Jake Lockley, but similar to the way that they introduced Steven by having him be the passive personality, I'm wondering if Jake is going to be the hyper-violent personality. Like, they turned Stephen Grant from, like, the wealthy socialite into, like, this really passive, I don't want to fight, I don't want to kill people, just get me out of this situation sort of guy. Mark is the mercenary, is the no-nonsense, I have my shit, I deal with it, let's just get this shit done. What if they're changing Jake from being, like, the guy on the street, the dude who knows what New York knows? What if they're doing to him what they did to Steven, but in the opposite direction? Jake Lockley doesn't have time for a normal life, because Jake Lockley's cutting motherfuckers' faces off. Jake Lockley is devoted to the fucking cause, man. Is is this theory based a little bit on the fact that I just want them to introduce Jake Lockley just, just, just a little bit? Yeah, 100% it is. I, I really want them to talk about it. My alternative theory is that Kanchu is doing a thing similar to when they, they went into the pyramid. And Kanchu literally just takes over his body himself and does his shit. And when Kanchu's got the body, everybody's out. I'm only saying that one because they've introduced that he can do that. And they haven't introduced Jake at all. They have not even said the word D.I.D. yet, so... While we're on the sort of mm, moments, did anybody else catch the fact that when, when Oscar Isaac had his shirt off, they very selectively cut the Star of David around his neck out of the shot every single time? Like, very consciously, the, the necklace ended right before the Star of David every single fucking time that they showed it? Either that or it was out of focus in the background? I don't know. I love the show. I just, I, I noticed that and I was like, hey, what, what the fuck? Everybody saw that in episode two, at, at least a little bit. It was like a literal blink and you miss it moment, but we did see that. You don't, you don't need to hide it. Anyway, yeah, I really hope that they're using this to introduce Jake Lockley. And honestly, I wouldn't be too, too angry about the, the personality change. I think that would be super cool. Plus then Moon Knight would have like three separate aspects that all show different parts of himself. It would be that complete pacifist, the middle of the road, and the fucking psychotic murderer who cuts people's faces off. Maybe Jake Lockley fights like how Moon Knight fights in the comics where I let them hit me. Like Mark was pretty banged up when he got the body again. Maybe Maybe Jake Lockley fights like comic book Moon Knight where it's just like, yeah, I'm gonna keep throwing hits at you. I don't give a fuck if you hit me. I'll heal. You won't. Anyway, yeah, I'm procrastinating. I, I have finals that I need to do. Final, singular. Actually, two, uh, no, there's two. The important part is that I'm procrastinating right now. So you guys enjoy your day. I'm gonna go back to th that shit. This is pretty far outside my usual content, but stitch this and tell me what's that one item you own that you want to use, but is way too nice for you to ever actually use. I'll go first. So as an artist, it's pretty common practice for you to always carry a sketchbook with you. Doesn't matter if this is the size of your palm, it could be your iPad, it could be anything, just something to draw on. You always have something. Well, back before I started doing all of well, this, this shit, I would go out every day during the summer and I would sketch people. Scroll back far enough, you'll find those videos. Well, anyway, my parents got me a sketchbook specifically to go out and do stuff like that. And that sketchbook would be this. This is a leather-bound, hand-pressed paper sketchbook. And it is just so nice that I have never used it. <laughs> Hold on, let me just, I'm gonna set you right there. And we are going to unwrap this thing. This, this makes me feel like I am Leonardo da Vinci. This makes me feel like I should be doing anatomy studies in this thing. What, am I gonna doodle fucking Spider-Man in the fuck? No, shit is permanent, it's terrifying. This doesn't tell me yours. <laughs> Okay, so give me a second to explain my reasoning here. So I've been meaning to do a P.O. Box video for forever. The only problem is that the last couple of ones that I got were kind of like small dose. So I was like, okay, I'll just wait until I get enough that I could do a whole three minute P.O. Box video. The same that I've done every time. Well, then finals month started. And then I moved. And I just kept on pushing that shit back. So I hope you guys are ready for a couple of these because uh, I have been sent quite a lot of shit. So yeah, welcome to uh, P.O. Box video. Part one. I'm gonna try and get through as much as I can. If I don't say your name or I don't, if you sent me something and I don't say the tag with the thing that you sent me, I probably just misplaced the note. I have all of the notes. I just, some of them don't align to boxes and I don't know which one they go to. This has been a pile for like a month. So I, I did the best I could. If I don't have a tag, I'm just gonna say the first name. Okay. Let's get into it. The first shout out goes to Miles for sending me the New Avengers 100 project. This is a comic from a charity known as the Hero Initiative that actually supports comics creators. This book compiles a hundred different covers from a hundred different artists on the New Avengers. This is super cool. This is something you don't see every day. So thank you. Thank you very much. Next shout out goes to Kid. 
KV? Is that is that how you pronounce that? I'm not I'm not particularly sure I'm supposed to pronounce that. Anyway, I, they sent me what I'm pretty sure is the softest blanket I have ever felt. It also just so happens to be fucking massive with a Red Hood logo on it. I'm gonna wear this like a cape for the rest of the video and none of you can stop! This is one that I'm pretty sure had a note, but I, I must have misplaced the note, so I apologize. But shout out to Catechus Art for sending me these, like, tags that are, like, Red Hood and comic book themed. These are awesome. As well as a super tiny Robin keychain that has Jason Todd's quote from the We Are Robin series on the back that being a Robin is about confidence. I love it. Those are dope. No idea if this came with a note or not, so this might just actually be from the Big Bad Toy Store itself, but somebody sent me a McFarlane Toys Lobo figure. And it's the real main man, too. I don't actually think they made Phobo toys. I would legitimately actually buy a Phobo toy just so I could have my two Lobos fucking it up. Anyway, if you sent this to me, thank you. And if it's just a big bad toy store, thank you as well. Okay, so forever ago, on my first talent talk, those of you who remember the first talent talk, it was mentioned that one of the people there was making a tiny little plushie of one of my logos. Well, that somebody was Emerald Sunstone, and that plushie just got sent, and this is fucking cute. Look at him, he's so squishy, I love it. And I read the note that came with it, and yes, I 100% remembered who you were from the first talent talk. That was awesome. In the same vein, we have a repeat customer here today. A little while back, a user by the name of Stabulous Crafts actually sent me this little plushy red hood. That is actually me underneath. Well, this time they sent me a little plushy Deadpool. That is also me underneath. They're like, brothers, this shit's awesome. So you guys have already seen this, but now I'm going to actually shout out Toby and Angel for sending them to me. I got Wolverine claws. I got fucking Wolverine claws. This shit's awesome. They also sent me a second pair of Wolverine claws that I actually can't show because... Did you hear that? Yeah, but they're fucking dope anyway. I have the fucking best fans. I love you guys. So here's everything we covered, and here's everything we have left. So, come back for part two. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, this is part two of me going through everything that I got in my P.O. box over the last couple of weeks, and there is way too much for a very long intro, so let's get the fuck into it. Well, a little while ago, you guys might have remembered me shouting out Comic Drake on my page. Well, as a thank you, Comic Drake sent me a Nightwing leather jacket. This makes me feel like the White Knight version of, of Nightwing. This version, that actually wears a leather jacket before he turns into a cop. Guess I don't need to have Nightwing wear a blue hoodie anymore, huh? What do you guys think? You guys think I'll make a good Nightwing? Okay, shout out to Steel Justice for sending me even more comic books. Like, holy shit, this, this is a bunch. As well as, like, a collection of really cool, like, trades and informational books. These are super dope, thank you. Shout out to Olivia for sending me some really cool watercolor fan art of both the Panda Red Hood and Bill. These are super fucking cool. And I absolutely love, like, the panda version of the Red Hood hood here. That is, that's so cool. Shout out to Pamela for sending me even more comics. I'm not annoyed. I, I've legitimately bought an extra box just for TikTok comics. This is hilarious. As well as the McFarlane Toys version of the Marsupial Boy, What Does the Chuckling? I didn't even know that they made a figure for this guy. This is actually really cool. All right, this next box has just a ton of stuff in it. Shout out to NVIDIA Envy for sending me a bunch of art. Check out this little watercolor blue jay. That is so cool. That is so good. As well as a pastel drawing of Panda Red Hood. I need to post more pictures in, in my Red Hood suit because like 98% of the pictures I see are in that exact pose. I'm not complaining. I'm just noting a pattern. They also sent me a keychain of my logo. An old Loot Crate exploding Deadpool. And a whole fucking box of Japanese candy. Okay, so I know that Kit Kats are actually really big in Japan, so that's probably why they're in the box, but I actually- the, the Kit Kats are one of my favorite candies. So this? This is dangerous. Alright, we got another plushie. Shout out to Lips Domestics for sending me a crocheted panda red hood. Both the hoodie and the hood come off. Here's proof! I love how they did the mohawk to actually be frizzy. That's a, that's really fucking cool. This is super cool. I love it. So shout out to Bisexual Biliophile for sending me this Batarang like necklace thing. The Batarang actually comes out, but I can't show that part because TikTok will get very angry. However, if you listen... It's a legit Batarang. Thank you to Cornilo for sending me a little uh, graduation card. That's really nice of you. And shout out to Dakota for sending me volume one of the DC Rebirth run of Batman Beyond. Library's getting huge. So shout out to Sarah over on my Patreon for sending me this impressionistic Batman in the Sun painting. Like, check this shit out. Isn't that fucking dope? So I'm not particularly sure who sent me this, but uh, now I have a running joke of just putting on anything that I find in this pile. So we're going to roll with it. So I'm going to say shout out to Jessica for this box for right now because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pronounce this app, but we're gonna try Kuro in a cocoon? Kuro in a cocoon? Did it did I get that right? I really hope I got that right. I feel terrible mispronouncing people's names. But shout out to them for sending a whole box of snacks from Singapore. Oh my inner fat kid is so happy. You guys are definitely gonna get another Panda Mom video uh when we get to the spicy stuff, because I know there's spicy stuff in here. There's two more boxes, but I want to be a little bit more serious with those because they have a little bit more serious of a message. But I have the best fans, I love you so much, and thank you all.
Okay, so this is technically a part three to the P.O. Box video that I did, but this one I wanted to have a little bit more of a serious tone with. And that is because these last two boxes are actually stuff sent to me by the living relatives of people who have passed. The brown box is from DeckBlue94 and Soren Knight Studios. Both them and their father were fans of my page, and this box is full of their father's old collection of Gru comics. So I want to personally say thank you to you guys for this box, because uh, Gru is also a connection to my dad for me. And it really means a lot that you guys sent me his, his collection after the fact. I thank you guys for watching, and this really does mean a lot to me. Thank you. The white box is from Night Willow 18 and Candy Bell 96. And it is full of a bunch of various DC and Marvel merch from their late uncle. I want you guys to know that I absolutely love everything in the box. I've looked through it like six times, and I have kept them in the box just so I can keep them special and separate from the rest. That's actually why I'm making this video separate from the other video. I felt like this needed a little bit more, a uh, little, little bit more of a different tone than than the uh, the normal PO box videos that I did. So, to both of you guys who have sent me both of these boxes, um, thank you, thank you very much. This genuinely means a lot to me, and it is. Uh, you never really expect to have that effect on, on people when you start making silly videos on your phone. <laughs> you don't really expect to, to like touch people where they live in their personal life to, to, to this effect when you start doing these videos. So I, I just want you guys to know that it really it really does mean a lot to me. It touches me where I live. So thank thank you guys. And I also want to apologize to Karoi Nekokun because I did not actually read to the bottom of the uh, the Singapore snacks box. So I had only read your letter after posting the original video that had the snack box in it. And reading through that, that, that really does, it touches me. It really means a lot. Th thank you for your kind words. And I'm glad that, that the things that I said had so much of an effect. Thank you very much. So yeah, that is, that's all of my PO box stuff. I just wanted to, to give this one an extra little bit of love. So Thank you all. I have the absolute best fans. I'll see you in the next one. So here's an opinion about superhero costumes that I don't see very much. I'm pretty sure it's the common consensus, but let me know if I'm wrong. A really common practice in superhero costumes today is when they're CG, which most of the time they are, is to remove wrinkles. So like the actor will be on set and they'll have a physical costume, and then they'll be digitally touched up later where the wrinkles from the costume will be removed. Two examples that come to my mind are the most recent Spider-Man movies and Avengers Endgame. Time travel suits in Endgame just like never fold. And Spider-Man's costumes in the MCU movies are pretty much the same. They don't they don't really wrinkle that much. My opinion is that the wrinkles are what makes it feel real. I don't have a problem with costumes being CGI. Hell, I'm a digital artist. CGI is my whole thing. But I think if they're gonna do it, they should go the route of Amazing Spider-Man 2 where they add wrinkles. The first shot of that movie is the wrinkled back of the Spider-Man suit. That makes it feel so tangible. Same with the Batman. Our costume's not pristine. It's not perfect. It wrinkles, it creases, it folds. And because of that, it feels like a real suit. I don't know. Let me know your opinion. Do the wrinkles in superhero costumes make them feel more real. So I saw a video that J Stubes did. By the way, go follow J Stubes. Anyway, I was watching a video that J Stubes did in response to a commenter making fun of Jane Foster Thor being in the new Thor movie, saying that her comics flopped so hard, so of course Marvel's gonna make a movie out of her because that makes sense. Which, I mean, like, first of all, fuck you. Jane Foster Thor is awesome, and if you disagree, read the book again. You're wrong. I'm joking, I'm joking. People have different tastes, people have different opinions, and that's totally okay. Just don't be a dick about it. However, it got me thinking, because that's not the first time I've seen that opinion. Uh... Guys, are y'all forgetting that one of the most successful Spider-Man, if not Marvel movies in recent memory, was partially based off of this? Or that this team that maybe one in every 15 comic book fans could even tell you existed was not popular until their fucking movie was made? I had no idea who the fuck these guys were until their movie was made. I had literally never in my life heard of Peacemaker until a year ago when he was in The Suicide Squad. Like. A character flopping in the comics does not mean that they're going to flop in, in a different media form. P people are aware of that, right? Comic book adaptations are, are these beautiful forms of media where you're able to shift and evolve pre-made stories to fit a new one, and, and you can make something new and beautiful out of that. Even if they're already successful, which, again, the Mighty Thor was. I don't know. That comment just hit me in the wrong way. It, it made me confused. Because equating one creative team's popularity and financial success to another creative team's ability to tell a story is... It, it's a weird, it's a weird marker for me is all. So I saw a lot of comments like this on my uh, last post about Jane Foster Thor, which like, no, no, no problem, no hate to the original poster. So I just want to go through and actually explain what happened and why she's called Thor. Because she didn't actually want to be called Thor. 
Around that time in the comics, Thor had become unworthy of wielding Mjolnir. If I remember correctly, it was because of the storyline Original Sin, which means that the reason that he became unworthy is information having to do with the fact that he had a secret sister he didn't know about. Which actually turned out to be Angela from the Spawn universe, but that's a whole nother deal. Hi there, Panda from the future here, just uh, popping in to let you know, I looked it up, uh, I was fucking wrong, it had nothing to do with Angela, instead, it was circled around Thor's insecurities about Gore the God Butcher being right from the Watcher's perspective. I know that that was fucking word soup and meant nothing to most people, but like, that that's thats what it actually was, onto the more important part of the video, that that's a video for its own day. The main point is that Thor was unworthy at this point, he had lost his ability to wield the hammer. And, uh, he, he was not, he was not doing great. He was not doing great with it. He fell into a depression, but he went, like, the opposite way that Endgame Thor did. When Thor became unworthy in the comics, instead of, of getting depressed and, and overeating and all of that, he, he got mad. He was very angry and he wanted to, to, to get his worthiness back. That was his whole being. It was part of who he was. And then, all of a sudden, this mysterious female stranger shows up wielding the hammer. Because mind you, Jane Foster Thor, it, it, it follows the original rules of Thor's hammer. Like originally in the comics, Thor took the form of immortal man Donald Blake that when he hit his stick to the ground turned into Thor. I don't remember if that's exactly how it worked for Jane Foster, but Jane Foster didn't look like Jane Foster. Because around this time in the comics, Jane Foster looked like this. I wouldn't think it was the same person either. We also have to take into consideration that the comics before used Thor as a title. For whoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. That right there is what we call using the name as a title. And this is kind of where it starts, because when Jane picks it up, the pronouns swap, instilling Thor as a title even more. But I said at the beginning that she didn't pick that name, so what, what the fuck did I mean by that? Well, Thor himself felt unworthy of the name. The name Thor had weight to it, it had power, it had respect. Thor is a hero, Thor is worthy. Who he was right now, he did not feel worthy of that name and so he gave it up. While that was his real name to everyone else in the world, Thor meant something more than just his name. So when he witnessed Jane Foster being all of the things he knew Thor was to people, he gave her the name Thor and started going by Odin's son. So long story short, while it is technically a name, it's also been used as a title multiple times in the comics before Jane Foster picked it up. Like when Thor first showed up, it was a title. Anyways, when Jane Foster uses it, it's a lot more symbolic than it is actual, like, give the, here's your name now. So yeah, I hope that clears up some of the confusion because I know that it's kind of weird. It's also really cool. Go read The Mighty Thor, it's amazing. Hey there, strangers. So I know I took like a three day unexplained hiatus uh, without telling anybody. So let me do the best I can here and explain why that happened. Apparently there's a lot of shit you gotta do before you graduate. Not like actual official shit, but more just like social cues and stuff, talking to people, hanging out with the people for the last time, you know, that sort of thing. And that is uh, actually today. I know you can barely see me because it's super dark right now and I'm in a parking garage, but like I'm, I'm in a suit right now. I'm graduating today. And that is just fucking... Oh shit. I know I already did my big soppy moving out moving on video, but like I, I just wanted to say th Thank you to everybody who has stuck around this long I started making videos cramped in a dorm room with three other dudes because I was bored in quarantine and Wanted to make myself laugh and apparently uh, Damn near a million people also wanted to laugh with me and that that's just it touches me so so much It's so cool I love the fact that I've been able to reach so many people with the content that I make and I love the fact that I have been able to to, to connect with so many people that it's so it's so amazing to me so really genuinely thank you to each and every single one of you who has ever commented on a video who's ever liked a video who's ever followed me you guys are the absolute greatest and i cannot imagine how i ever got the audience that i do i love you guys so much i cannot wait to see what tomorrow brings i cannot wait to see what post graduation brings for me I guess I can't really use the uh, I'm a broke student excuse when people ask why I don't have shit now. Now I'm just fucking unemployed. Well, that's all I really got, guys. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna go graduate now, so thank you guys for sticking around. I'll see you next time. So I have been gone for a while. I guess I can't really use the excuse that I'm just a broke student anymore. Now I'm just fucking unemployed. And I did I already apologize for the fact that I've been gone a lot uh, because of my graduation. And I'm actually filming this little intro here to tell you that that's, that's enough fucking over. Not the graduation. I already did the fucking ceremony. Fuck that shit. I'm gone. But I am going to have about another week of being a little bit spotty with uploads. I'm uh, going on vacation for a week to separate my brain from the fact that I just spent four years working my ass off and barely sleeping. I'm not going to not upload. It's just probably going to be a little bit spotty and probably not a single video every day. Whatever. Y'all get it.
point. Where the, where the fuck was I going with this? Oh, right. Welcome back to Regrettable Superhero of the Week, the weekly, not weekly show where I take one character at random out of the League of Regrettable Superheroes and then I run them the fuck down. Really putting that weekly, not weekly to use. It's been three fucking weeks since I did one of these. Okay, buddy. I gave you a little bit of a break. I gave you a little bit of a hiatus. You've had some time to rest. Now give me somebody good on the first try or I swear to fucking God I'm putting you back on the shelf. Let's see who we get to. Damn it. You to dick. You. Gun master. And bullet the gun boy. I. <laughs> Those are the names you went with? Was Captain AK and Kid 47 taken? He's Billy the Clip and this is the magazine kid. He's Sig. I'm sorry. Prepare to get blasted. That's Smith. This is Weston. You're fucked. Literally, there's just so many fucking names you could have went with other than Bullet the Gun Boy. So you thought that you could just reuse the goddamn Lone Ranger and I wouldn't notice, didn't you? Is it necessary for you to dress like a fucking pirate? Also, dude, love the costume, but I'm not sure if it's such a good idea to jump the guy known as the fucking Gun Master. He might look like a fucking moron, but I can count three pieces on his person right now. And that's not even counting Bullet over here. Are they fighting because he took his hat? I bet you they're fighting because he took his hat. It's always annoying when a character I can make fun of this much actually has a lot of potential after I read the story. Gunmaster was created by Dick Giordano in Six Gun Heroes number 59 in Charlton Comics of October of 1960. And yes, that's the same Charlton Comics that DC later acquired and almost made into the Watchmen. There ain't no way Gunmaster wouldn't have been in Watchmen. I just fucking know it. He would have been a background character somewhere. He, he's had to have been. The stories of Gunmaster and Bullet the Gun Boy take place in the Old West. By day, Gunmaster is an apprentice gunsmith Smith named Clay Boone, who is a pacifist, which seems a little contradictory for a gunsmith vigilante called Gunmaster. Clay agrees with this sentiment and calls himself a coward for not living by his own principles. However, he also says, if I must resort to guns as they do, then I will be the master of the weapon. My enemies have guns, I have better ones. They have skill, I will match that better. If I must fight, then I will win. Damn, bro, you sure you ain't a fucking poet? Shit. Yeah, he then takes his gun shop on the road. Really holding to those pacifist ideals there, huh, bud? Where he picks up a kid's sidekick, Bullet the Gun Boy, whose real name is Bob Teleb. Read it backwards. Have I ever mentioned I hate puns? You know, honestly, this guy didn't do too bad. He had a couple dozen appearances. I don't think this guy's regrettable. You just need to put in a little extra work for him and change his sidekick's fucking name. Not regrettable. So as those of you who follow my Instagram probably know, I have been on vacation in Maui for the past couple of days. And while I'm here, I thought I'd stop by the local and seemingly only comic shop in Maui, Maui Comics and Collectibles. The place is only about 15 minutes from the airport, and let me tell you guys right now, this place is really fucking cool. While I was there, I had the chance to meet the owner, Alika, who I will tell you is a super cool dude. While this store might not be absolutely gigantic, I will tell you this place is absolutely packed with comics. As you can see, there is plenty of backstock, and they sell original artwork up on the walls, some of which is actually from comic pages, which is just super cool. And this might just be me, but it is increasingly rare to actually see CDC-graded comics out for sale with the other comics. It is really cool to see. You can really tell that a lot of passion and love goes into this shop with maintaining it even through COVID. After talking with Alika, he actually confirmed to me that this is seemingly the only comic shop in Maui, which makes it even more impressive that they were able to keep this comic culture alive down here. He was actually kind enough to gift me a couple of shirts that they have made for the shop, both in pink and black varieties, which it's like the same brand who makes my merch, so I can tell you right now it's quality. And don't let the huge stock of older comics fool you. These guys do sell modern comics, and in fact, I picked up a couple of issues of Mark Wade's World's Finest while I was there. Don't get it mistaken though, these dudes sell a ton of older comics, and a ton of trades, and graphic novels, and toys. They packed an entire shop into a corner of a record store, and that is the coolest fucking thing in the world to me. On top of all of this, they support local comics creators in Hawaii, they host their own podcast called Nerdwatch, and they're the creators of the Maui Comic Con, a non-profit free walk-in Comic Con. Next time you're in Maui, check out Maui Comics and Collectibles. Trust me. Yup, laugh it up. I stopped my, my P.O. box today and, uh, something came in the mail. You know, the funniest part is that these are the parts of the costume that are, like, the, the least weird. Welcome to an impromptu P.O. box video. Uh, thank you to... Who the fuck sent me this? Shout out to at cute blue socks on uh, on Twitter. I don't I don't know your TikTok at for sending me this costume. I'll get to the other PO box stuff and the other stuff that you sent, but I I need to get through this real quick. So I'm not sure you could tell from this angle, but th this cape has the biggest neckline I have ever seen on fucking anything. Also, the second I latched, the second latch it just immediately came off. We're working with quality here. You know, honestly, the utility belt isn't that bad. I I've se I've seen worse utility belts. The mask, on the other hand, I feel like if this Robin died, they wouldn't even publish it. They'd just talk about it off. Panel. I look like fucking Eminem. I even have an R for red. Who designed this mask to go over the ears? I just, oh, I, I can't, I can't. I don't, 
Where is his wrist? Look at how massive this glove is. I feel like these are more befitting of like Dexter's mom than they are of Robin. About to go out rocking those Peter Pan 9000. I don't know, man. I think, uh, I think I might be starting a trend down here. All right, let's get to the part you're all waiting for. Yep. No, I will not be putting them on. Fuck that. I put on the majority of this shit. I did. I have some of my shame left, okay? And even if I didn't, it wouldn't be able to fit because the fucking shorts are massive. These pants were obviously made for Dick Grayson and I do not fucking fit them. Look at the size of these fuckers. They're almost as tall as my fucking torso. Holy shit. And even though like 80% of this costume is fucking massive and way too big for me, if I take this belt off, my belly will still pop out the bottom. Is this what Jason Todd felt like when he wore all of this shit under under his Red Hood outfit. I gotta try that now, don't I? Not in this video. Fuck that. Anyway, I have like a minute left to get through the rest of this stuff. Let's take this fucking cape off. World's most attractive neckline. Let's get into it. Luckily, this is not the only thing the cute blue socks sent me. They also sent me hair gel, which is just, I will always need the look of my hair. I will always need it. As well as like this super cool Batman clock. Thank you so much. This almost makes it up for the Speedo. Almost. Everybody say congratulations to Riley and Sulika for getting engaged. I would also like to thank you for the invitation to your wedding. However, I will not be able to attend because it is on my birthday. So I, I'm sorry. I would really attend if I could. I wish you all the best. The note didn't have a name on it, but thank you to whoever sent it for the uh, over the door organizer because I, I definitely need it. There's so much shit. And like you said in your note, yeah, it'll most likely end up getting used for jackets. Shout out to mdon021 and bow to your sensei for sending me this super cool painted stein. It's even got like my logo on the back of it. I, I am definitely using this on, on the Samurai War on our D&D videos. And lastly, thank you to Zoologist Jenny for sending me a full box of treats for my graduation. As well as like a Digipen banner for my wall. This is awesome. Thank you. And Ella and Gemma will definitely love the dog treats that you sent. Thank you very much. I have the best fans sometimes. Thank you all. I love you. And that is going to be it, my god. I know I'm not dead. Let me just take a minute to thank all of my lovely patrons over on Patreon. Andra Lanowitz, Background Joshua, Benjamin Hadler, Bill Bro, Blue, Brandon Laney, Butterguys51, Carol Cowett, Cassie Pace, Channon Pandragon, Chaz Masters, C. Randy Gamble, Danny Walker, DeCassowary, Diandra, Dragon Fang, Dylan Sheffer, Eternal Misfit, Fuck Me Ray Bradbury, Gas Boss Gatelight Girl Keep, Grey Ghost, Jenny Chanti, Cat Stevens, Christina Odd, Linda Macker, Ma Goo, Mary Baldwin, Matthew Church, Pandora A, Patricia Chops, Pinchy Magur, Raymond Vilsana, Ricky Ticky Davi, Silent Princess, Cena Henry Jr., Silver Bullets 23, Sring, Tarara, The Lady Ray, The Fire Branded, Theresa Harrison, Tyler Ellis, Unique Apple Pie, and Victor Virol. As well as all of my other lovely supporters over on Patreon and on all of my other platforms, thank you all for sticking around for so long. I know it has been forever since I ended up posting a video on here. It has been a couple of of months. And in my own defense, I did graduate during this time and ended my four years of college. So it has been a while. I do apologize for how long it has been, but I am back. I'm going to keep posting these every month. I have some things on the way that I'm working on. So thank you all for supporting me. Thank you all for sticking around and I will see you next time.